Hello everyone and welcome to Forensic Extract and today's topic of discussion is stab wounds. So in previous 2-3 videos we have discussed about, uh, about lacerated wound and incised wound. So today we will be discussing about stab wounds. Stab wounds are the wounds which are having depth as maximum dimension maximum dimension means that the depth of the wound depth of the wound will be maximum as compared to length and the width of the wound the depth will be maximum in case of a strap wound now based on the features On the skin, stab wound can be the margins of the stab wound can be sharp if the stab wound is caused by sharp weapon, then this is known as incised stab wound. But if the stab wound is caused by the weapon with rounded margin or round margins then the margins will be lacerated or contused so these are known as lacerated stab wounds so based on the weapon used we will find the features on action surface whether the margins are sharp or the margins are irregular or contused now there are various types of stab wounds so stab wounds are caused by the force which is applied by a weapon along its long axis so the depth will be the maximum dimension so if the weapon is just reaching up to the skin level then this is known as puncture wound and tip of the weapon is reaching up to the cavity then this is known as penetrating stab wound and if the weapon is traversing through and through then this is known as perforating stab wound perforating stab wounds now first of all the puncture wounds puncture wounds are mostly caused by uh, sharp objects, sharp pointed objects, uh, maybe sometime may be concealed puncture wounds uh, in the nape of neck uh, for puncture of medulla oblongata, or maybe over concealed area like the inner canthus of eye and the various vital areas like axilla in the vagina or the anus. So these are known as concealed puncture wounds and sometimes in enter and, uh, and the posterior fontanelles as a method of infanticide so these are the puncture wounds now penetrating wounds are the wounds which are reaching in the cavity whether in the peritoneal cavity uh, or the pleural cavity or the cranial cavity or any other cavity now the perforating wounds are some wounds which are traversing through and through so there is entry wound as well as exit wound exit wound like in case of firearm but in case of firearm there is small entry wound and large exit wound mostly exceptions are there but in case of the stab wounds as the blade is gradually tapering so the entry wound will be larger in most cases and the exit wound will be smaller due to tapering of blade so there are three types of stab wounds first is puncture the second one is penetrating and third one is perforating stab wounds now this is a pic which is showing multiple stab wounds over left side of left and anterior aspect of chest then the stab wound 
and the correlation between the weapon so as we know that weapon is having a blade and the this is the hilt and this is the handle now we will discuss about the single edged weapon so this as uh, edge is blunt and this one is sharp and this end is pointed so the length of the stab wound length of the stab wound is equal to the width of the blade of the weapon length is equal to width of the weapon then the width of the stab wound is equal to the thickness of the weapon now the depth of the stab wound depth of the stab wound is equal to the length of the blade that uh, that has entered into the body so these uh, these are the features really uh, in relation to alleged weapon of offense so that we can correlate the injury caused on the body with the alleged weapon that these are the injuries which are caused by the alleged weapon or not so for that we will be discussing about the single edged weapon and the double edged weapon so in case of single edged weapon the injuries or the stab wound that is caused is the wound which is maybe tear drop shape or wedge shape or sometimes due to uh, this blunt end there may be fist tailing at opposite side due to laceration so these are the wounds which are caused by single edged weapon but if the weapon is double edged weapon weapon is of uh, is having double sharp edges then the wound will be elliptical or spindle shape with both the margins are acute both the ends or the margins of the uh, stab wound are acute if the weapon is double edged weapon so based on these features in the injury caused we can decide or determine the characteristic features of alleged weapon of offense now as we have discussed about the dimensions of stab wound so what happens that if stab wound is caused on the unyielding surfaces like chest so the depth is equal to the length of the blade but what happens if it is caused on the yielding surface like abdomen like abdomen so what happens whenever the stab wound is caused on abdomen the skin retracts inward because the uh, abdomen is yielding surface so the the length of the blade is l as shown in the picture and what happens after the blade is taken out by the assailant the length that is measured is l plus x so this is the false length because the skin surface uh, that has entered up to this level and that recoils back to its normal position then this x is extra length that is uh, that will be falsely misinterpreted as the depth of the stab wound as l plus x that should be noted that the actual length on yielding surface is the l not l plus x now this similarly in the chest as we have just discussed the chest is the unyielding surface so the depth of the weapon uh, depth of the stab wound is the uh, equal to the length of the blade of the knife so if the stab wound is caused on the chest then 
the blade of the knife penetrates in the lungs. So this is the length and the depth of the stab wound. So this is the stab wound entry point. And what happens that point A, point A that was the maximum or the uh, point of depth of stab wound, that point A shifts uh, from A to A dash due to collapse of lung because uh, due to stab wound that lungs will collapse so that false length that is measured is L plus X in case of collapse of lung in uh, if the stab wound has entered in the, uh, into the chest cavity and piercing the lung so this is also going to give the false depth of stab wound as L plus X. So one should be careful while measuring uh, the depth of stab wound in chest as well as abdominal cavity and these points should be considered. So this is um, uh, about the depth of stab wound. The depth may be falsely more as in case of different kind of situations like abdomen and chest cavity. So the stab wounds can be on the vital areas directly the stab wound can be on the heart like this as shown in the picture this was the stab wound over the uh, heart anterolateral wall of heart and that was caused by a single edge weapon as examined so it these stab wounds can be caused uh, on the heart and if the stab wound is on the left ventricle so the wall of left ventricle is thicker as compared to right ventricle so left ventricle wall thickness causes self closure self closure of stab wound for some time but right ventricle wall is thin so there is no effective closure of stab wound and that is responsible for sudden death death is slightly delayed in case of left ventricular puncture as compared to the right ventricular uh, uh, stab wound so the right ventricle and left ventricle stab wounds both are fatal but that will be rapid in case of stab wound over right ventricle or any of atria now the stab wounds are uh, the shape of stab wound is depends on the uh, the stab wound caused along the lines of langers or it is placed perpendicular to the lines of langer lines of langers are the arrangement of elastic fibers in the body so if these stab wounds are caused along the line of langer then the shape will be normal but if these are placed transversely and cutting these elastic fibers then the shape will be like this and there will be gapping in the stab wound so based on the stab wound location there will be gapping in the stab wound so now based on the stab wound on the body we can trace the alleged weapon of offense or we can give opinion based on the characteristics of this stab wound caused by a particular 
weapon or, or some similar kind of weapon then we can decide the relative position relative position between the offender and the victim so it is helpful in solving of crime then stab wounds are important in deciding the direction direction of weapon and direction of force applied on the body force applied then one should be able to differentiate between suicidal homicidal and accidental stab wounds so this is all about stab wounds so to conclude that uh, stab wounds are caused by the pointed objects that may be sharp or maybe with uh, rounded margins then there are three kinds of uh, stab wounds first is puncture perforation and the penetrating wounds then the stab wounds uh, are having three dimensions that is one is length then the breadth and the depth depth is the is the maximum dimension so based on these dimensions we can correlate these um, uh, dimensions with the dimension or the measurements of at least weapon of offense so it is useful in correlating the or the finding out of the alleged weapon of offense so thank you guys and please do subscribe forensic extract and thanks a lot